And as our trainers get started, I don't see wh why Paul would try and avoid setting up Trick Room here. Yes, it's true that there's a lot of opportunities for Shi Liang to mitigate the amount of damage that Calyrex Ice Rider will do once it is on the field, as we do see it led alongside of that Pelipper for Paul against the Grim Snarl and the Incineroar for Shi Liang. So you want to have that speed control regardless, and then you just want to have enough time within that trick room to deal damage through the damage mitigation. Most likely the Reflect here, potentially a Will-O-Wisp as well, but I don't think you want to lock in your Fire-type Terrastalization when you're expecting a later uh, Kyogre in the game. Actually, just the Thunder Wave coming out from the Grim Snarl onto the Pelipper. So Pelipper will be paralyzed, will be slower than the Incineroar, so not able to pick up a KO with the Weather Ball. Instead, Xi Liang is able to get the Will-O-Wisp off onto Calyrex oh. and gets the Paralysis to boot. Paul has not been able to do anything this turn. A little bit of damage coming out from that Glacial Lance, but because Paul tried to preserve the Terrastalization, is affected by that burn, and you don't even have to set up the, the screens. No. That did no damage to either of those Pokemon. No, and I think it's very smart to prioritize lowering the Pelipper's speed and then trying to get the burn to connect. Then you go for the Reflect. Well, this is it, the saddest Calyrex. It, it is the saddest Calyrex indeed. And while it is unfortunate that that turn did not go in Paul's favor, I think that you just have to try and find some damage here. And you have to assume this parting shot will switch into a Pokemon like the Kyogre, who's going to be so happy to enter the field with the Reflect, with the Burn, and being able to resist a potential Weather Ball here as well. All right, well, Hurricane comes out from the Pelipper, dealing a little bit of damage back to the Grimmsnarl after the parting shot. Another Glacial Lance connects onto Grimmsnarl and the Kyogre. And look at how little damage that Kyogre took, of course, with the Reflect and the Burn. It is happily sitting at just under full health, and there is nothing stopping Xi Liang from also being able to put up the light screen this turn or save Grimmsnarl in case you need to reset screens later. I think saving the screens for later is smart because we don't necessarily know which Pokemon <laughs> that Paul has in the back, and you know, you can just stack another damage reduction on top of that. Pelipper is able to hold on thanks to the Focus Sash from that Thunder, but I think more importantly here, we should take a moment to review some Kyogre damage calculations <laughs> because... Ooh. Okay, well, maybe talk about the confusion first. <laughs> yeah, well, the confusion is the one thing that Paul has going for him in this game so far. Yeah, that was a super effective attack onto that Wo Chien, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the confusion onto Kyogre now, making it a slowing down Xi Liang's offense. And any turn that Kyogre isn't able to deal damage is going to be really big for Xi Liang, as it is the only Pokemon that we've seen with significant offense so far. Yeah, so there is a bit of a, a guessing game going on here between these two players. So Wide Guard on Pelipper will stop both the Water Spout and the Origin Pulse for from Xi Liang's Kyogre. But realistically speaking here, Kyogre has no motivation to go for those spread moves until this Pelipper has been removed from the field. Because in typical situations, Water Spout will still deal more damage than Origin Pulse as long as Kyogre is over about 50 to 60% of its health. So we do see Shi Liang try to sneak in a wide guard there. Unfortunately, does not get the damage to connect. But I think more importantly, with the Leech Seed now on top of the burn on this Calyrex Ice Rider, there's really not much Paul can do. And rather than try and switch in a Pokemon to catch a potential uh, additional Leech Seed or maybe even a uh, Thunder, Ice Beam, Water Spout, or Origin Pulse on that switch, I think you just have to wait for one of your two Pokemon to be KO'd so that you can send in something to hopefully be at full damage. And again, looking at Paul's team, you really have to hope it's that Raging Bolt in the back as you want a strong special attacker to make up for the fact that there's just so much damage mitigation against those physical attackers right now. And Paul and Puff to heal as well. Yeah, Xi Liang just has so much health on the board. Yeah, there is damage mitigation and then there is, oh, you dealt some damage to me? Don't worry about it. I have Paul and Puff and Leech Seed. Now, Kyogre did waste a turn there, hit itself in its own confusion which means that this Pelipper has been able to get the Helping Hand onto the Calyrex to boost the uh, damage of that Glacial Lance just a little bit. And every little piece of damage will count. 
as you can say, as you say, Paul is likely trying to stall out as long as possible, not give away free damage to Xi Liang, and instead try to get a little bit of chip uh, and maybe wait for those screens to reset that reflect at least. Yeah, and the fact that Rain ran out as well does sort of force Xi Liang to consider a switch moving forward. It's like if you're Paul, you don't switch out your Pelipper at one HP really in any situation, especially given that the rain was mostly to reduce any fire type damage coming through for the Calyrex Ice Rider. Uh, oh, Water oh. Spout finally connects. No Wide Guard coming out instead. Pelipper will go down. The Water Spout not as powerful because the rain has ended, but still picks up the KO. Easy to do that on one hit point and a little bit of damage to the Calyrex itself. There is another Glacial Lance just chipping away at the Kyogre, but Xi Liang, uh, the Leftovers recovery and the Leech Seed recovery, keeping that Wo Chien extremely healthy and just walling Paul's team right now. I'm very curious to see what Pokemon Paul has in the back of his party. Uh, as we actually get the double mm -hmm. KO, thanks to the, the damage from the Leech burn. Seed there and the burn. Um, Kyogre is just sitting very, very healthy right now. Will be significantly more threatened by the presence of Raging Bolt on Paul's side of the field, but seeing that his final Pokemon is going to be that Urshifu Rapid Strike style, Paul is left with a very difficult choice here. He has to pick one move on that Urshifu to lock into for the remainder of this match. And while the close combat does seem like the best possible move against the Wochan, against the Incineroar, and then the Kyogre and the Grimson are a little bit less. Uh, you will be taking defensive drops every attack you go for, and I think that's a very dangerous strategy to rely on, given how little damage Xi Liang is going to take from those attacks, thanks to the Tablets of Ruin and the Reflect, which are still in play. Well, it's going to be the terrestrialization from Raging Bolt. Paul has been able to maneuver two attackers out on the field uh, and including a powerful special attacker from that Raging Bolt. Of course, seeing that, Xi Liang will go for the Grass terrestrialization on Kyogre to protect it from those electric type attacks like a Thunderclap or a Thunderbolt from the Raging Bolt. The close combat is the choice, still dealing about 50% damage to the Wo Qian. Really no other option for Paul if he has any hope to make it through the rest of this game. There's the Thunderbolt connecting onto the Wochian as well. Picks up the KO with the Terrastalization, that extra damage boost getting the Snail off the field and allowing the Urshifu to deal a little bit of damage back. Now this Ice Beam again, this is only an Assault Vest oh. Kyogre, so it doesn't deal a lot of damage, but there is always the chance to freeze. The, the Ice Age has come for Raging Bolt. That is a really unfortunate freeze there for this Raging Bolt. But I do still think that Xi Liang has the momentum on his side of the field. He does have to play very carefully from this point on, as, again, the Kyogre really is his best damage-dealing Pokemon at this point in time. And this close combat is going to do a significant amount of damage to that Pokemon when it does connect. It cannot connect this turn thanks to that flinch. But uh, still, as long as you're able to remove the Raging Bolt from the field, which uh, probably will happen next turn, judging by how much damage that Water Spout did, the Grim Snarl should be able to come in and finish off the Urshifu with a, uh, I believe it's the Fairy type attack the that it carries, break, yeah. the Spirit Break. So still in a very commanding position for Xi Liang, but Paul, his option here was to hope for not the freeze and then just go with for more damage on that Raging Bolt and unfortunately just did not have it in this match. Yeah, unfortunate for Paul getting, uh, was able to get both of those Pokemon in, but the freeze meant that the Raging Bolt was not able to deal as much damage as you may want out of that Pokemon. And of course, it all comes down to that turn one yep. where uh, Xi Liang was able to paralyze the Pelipper. We yep. saw Paul trying to build already in turn one of our game Game two here, Grimmsnarl and Incineroar, again the leads for Xi Liang, and the combination Pelipper and Calyrex the leads for Paul. So a repeat of turn one of game one. And we saw how that worked out for Paul last time. You have to imagine hoping for something a little bit different here. And now the obvious answer would be, uh, you know, something like you have the Terrestrialization, Kyogre isn't out yet, you do have the Protect as well but the Terrestrialization is fire and you're doing fire into a Kyogre team. And Xi Liang, of course, sees that, makes the adjustments, fakes out the Pelipper to prevent that Pokemon from being able to make a move and gets a Reflect up entirely for free. 
Given the fact that Reflect will last for eight turns, knowing that the Grimmsnarl is holding that light clay item does give Shi Liang a bit of flexibility in terms of the order that he sets all these things up in. And again, I think expecting the Ice Rider Calyrex to protect that turn was a very uh, predictable play from Paul. Still a very safe play at the end of the day. It does give you the opportunity to see what Shi Liang did and then respond. There was no end of the game in turn one. At exactly, that point. exactly. And by sending in the Raging Bolt now, you do ensure that if there is a Will-O-Wisp from that Incineroar, it will not mitigate your damage output. Even if it's a knockoff, really, you already just used your held item. So there's only so much Incineroar can do to the Raging Bolt. Well, there is again the Paralysis coming through from the Grim Snarl. So Xi Liang stalling out the uh, turn one from game one to the turn two of game two. But Paul, of course, recognizing that as a threat. And crucially, this Pelipper was not fully paralyzed, which means that this Weather Ball is able to connect with the Incineroar and pick up the one hit KO. And that could be big, because one of the other things that ended up happening at the end of game one was Paul was locked into close combat, one of the only attacks on Urshifu that uh, can actually have its damage reduced by Intimidate. Exactly. Uh, it could be big, but there's still some different cards in play for Shi Liang as well. Grimmsnarl being at full health here means that there is the opportunity for either the Light Screen or the Spirit Break this turn. I think you prioritize Light Screen because, again, the odds that this game will last eight more turns from this point in time is very low in the Scarlet and Violet era. And then you don't have to worry about catching a potential Protect here from the Raging Bolt, but instead, Xi Liang opting to try and drop the special attack via an attack. <laughs> also probably looking to do some super effective damage as well. Yeah, one of the benefits of that spirit break is being able to start chipping away at this Raging Bolt, which, you know, the burn is a stronger effect on the Calyrex, but that little bit of damage will still be chipping away at those hit points, and that plus super effective spirit breaks will start to add up. Which is why we're about to see a Terrastalization hit the field here for Paul. That's going to be the electric Raging Bolt once again. For sure. And if there's one way you can get around the potential special attack drop from a light screen or a single spirit break, it would be this Terrastalization paired with a helping hand. hand. You know, normally this would be enough to pick up the KO onto this Grim Snarl, but after this light screen, I think it will be able to hold on for one more turn. Let's just see how much damage this Pokemon can do. Well, there's the lightning bolt coming out from the top of the light bulb on the raging bolt. Not enough to pick up the KO like you called out and Wochian will seed the Raging Bolt. So Wochian is now capable of just sitting on the field as long as that Raging Bolt is on the field. And the combination of Leech Seed plus Burn, we saw it in game one, how much it uh, added up on the Calyrex. Now it's doing the same thing to the Raging Bolt. Honestly, I know that the Pelipper threatens some pretty decent damage into the Wochian, but if it's able to connect a Leech Seed with Pelipper as well, <laughs> I think even though it will be threatened by that super effective damage from a Hurricane, knowing the rain is about to expire and just knowing that Pelipper has a chance to be paralyzed as well, uh, <laughs> means Wochian's pretty comfortable. Yep. Yeah, this Wochian is extremely happy right now. Uh, the rain has just stopped, which means that Pelipper's best way of dealing damage to it has had its accuracy drop significantly back down to 70, I believe. And now the yep. burn and the leech seed adding up on the Raging Bolt plus the ruination means that that Pokemon is not long for this world, especially with the Kyogre now out on the field. Kyogre will most likely have to terrestrialize this turn as it is going to be slower than this Raging Bolt and it will have to worry about taking super effective damage. We've already seen oh. Paul lock into Helping Hand and the terrestrialization as well, but this time around, Helping Hand will not be able to come through thanks to that paralysis and with no terrestrialization. <laughs> Kyogre hovers just at that key uh -huh. point prior to a little help from its yep. friend, <laughs> where Water Spout will still do more than enough damage to pick up the KO on Raging Bolt, and potentially this Pelipper as well. Yep, that is now a max power Water Spout. The Assault Vest coming up huge for Shi Liang there. Of course, Paul also missing out on the extra damage amplification from Helping Hand meant that Kyogre was over 50% health. 
this Kyogre is trained to be slower than the Wochien so that it I could get the Pollen that. Puff off and get the big power Water Spouts. I love that so much. That is really borrowing from this Shadow Rider, or excuse me, Ice Rider Calyrex team, where typically you run the Amoongus one or two speed points slower than the Calyrex so that you are able to move first in Trick Room and heal it up. Shi Liang has put his own spin on this, or maybe I should say the Tang Gang <laughs> put their own spin on this giving this Wochan the ability to heal up Kyogre and shore up one of its biggest weaknesses when it comes to Water Spout.